بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي الأحباب إمام بابهاري رحمه الله تعالى mention uh, in his third point in the treaties رحمه الله تعالى he mentioned that والأساس الذي تبنى عليه الجماعة هم أصحاب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رحمهم الله أجمعين وهم على السنة والجماعة فمن لم يخذ عنهم فقد ضل وابتدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة ضلالة وكل ضلالة وأهلها في النار أي الأحباب إمام بابهاري said the foundation upon which the Jama'ah is built is the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah have mercy upon all of them. They are Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So whoever does not take from them has gone astray and innovated. And every innovation is misguidance and misguidance and its people are in the fire. Shaykh Salim bin Fawzan, Hafid Allah Ta'ala said, uh, in reference to this, this is part of, the, of what the Shaykh said, Alama al fuzan stated about bid'ah in the religion. He said, uh, all bid'ah is misguidance. Regarding the statement where the Prophet والسلام, said, Kulu bid'atun dalala, kulu bid'atun dalala. That all bid'ah is uh, misguidance. He said, therefore, there is no bid'ah hasana like some people claim. Rather, all bid'ah is misguidance and according to the text of the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, when he said, Verily, all novelties are innovation and all innovation leads to the fire. Therefore, bid'ah in the deen has no benefit ever. Instead, all of it is misguidance and that is the speech of the Prophet wasallam, who does not speak from his desires. His statement, misguidance and its people are in the fire. This is the statement of Imam Babahari, rahimahullah ta'ala, where he said, He said, and misguidance and its people are in the fire. Shaykh Salim ibn Fuzan, hafadhullah ta'ala, said, His statement, misguidance and its people are in the fire. The people of misguidance and misguidance is in the fire, either due to their disbelief or their sinfulness. Okay, so the people of misguidance and bid'ah, they perhaps will be punished in the fire. And this is either due, as the Sheikh said, to their disbelief, either they have bid'ah mukaffara, takes them out of the fold of Islam, or their sinfulness then bid'ah is not all on the same level. So the Sheikh said that bid'ah is not all on the same level. So this is very important. We've said this countless times in many of our lectures because many of the people, or some of the people, seem to be confused about the concept of bid'ah, that when you say uh, someone has done a bid'ah, or if you say someone is a mubtadi'ah, some people believe that means that you've uh, declared them to be a disbeliever, that they're no longer a Muslim. No, that's not the case. Bid'ah is of two types, as the Sheikh is going to say. And as we've said, uh, even in the last lecture, I believe we, we spoke about it. So he said, Bid'ah, then Bid'ah is not all on the same level. There is some that is disbelief, and the perpetrator will reside in the fire forever, like seeking assistance from the dead supplicating to the dead, sacrificing to other than Allah, and vowing by other than Allah. Then this is the bid'ah kufriya. This is the bid'ah mukafra, as we mentioned. This is the bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Likewise, negating the divine names and attributes of Allah. That's disbelief. And I seek refuge in Allah from that. This is because they describe Allah as having no divine names or attributes, then he would be non-existent, non-existent, because that which exists must have characteristics, and that which possesses no characteristics does not exist. That's very imperative that we understand the logic here, that the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, when they deal with the uh, groups like the Jahmiyyah, 
and the Mu'tazila and those other early sects that divided the Ummah and deviated with regards to the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because their misguidance uh, cause was a cause for Ahl Sunnah to have to analyze what they say and deal and refute it. Refute it with Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah and also using uh, the, the very logic that those people believe that they're basing their uh, analysis regarding creed. And this brings up the, the question of minhaj, that you have from Ahl Bidah, uh, especially groups like the Jahmiya, Mu'tazila, uh, Ash'ira, uh, the Diobandis, and others, that from the usul of their, their minhaj, is that they make pre take preference to their intellect over the text. So what they do is they make a inference or what have you, or make a, uh, a hypothesis perhaps, and then they use the text to support it. Then they go to the Quran and go to the Sunnah to support, to see how they can make, and if they find something in the Quran or the Sunnah that doesn't agree with their intellect, then that's when they come with the ta'wil. They say, no, that's not befitting. We don't want to make a uh, resemblance between Allah and His creation. So the verse means this, and it means this. And they, this is where the ta'wil and the ta'til and the tahrif and those other things that they fall into, this is where it comes into play. It's because they, uh, as part of their methodology and understand the Quran and the Sunnah, and this is what we mentioned when we made a refutation about the brother May Allah guide us in him, uh, Imran Hussein, uh, because his methodology, we're not saying that he made some mistakes only, we're saying he has a minhaj which goes against kitab wa sunnah and the faham of the salaf of this ummah. We're saying that he has a whole minhaj, a methodology, a path which deviates from the path of Ahl sunnah and it is a path which makes taqdeem, taqdeem al-aql ala naql. It makes the it, it makes preference, it takes preference to the intellect, what he understands from the sunnah, what they understand from the hadith, what they understand from the ayat, over the actual nasus itself and its meaning, and over what the salaf of this ummah understood. This is very problematic, and this leads to the people to going astray and going away from the sabila mu'minin, as we spoke about in the seventh uh, dars that Ahl Sunnah and the uh, companions radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een they are the foundation of the Sunnah and they uh, form the Sabil al-Mu'mineen their path, their methodology for understanding the religion is the Sabil al-Mu'mineen they had taslim, they accepted the news oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he, uh, 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 that he, he, he rose above his throne khalas, we accept that they didn't ask how, they didn't negate they didn't change the meaning, no, they accepted it. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Yanzilu Rabbuna tabarak wa taala kulu thulu thalayl al akhir fi yuqul." They, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih Muslim, as reported as in Sahih Muslim, that Allah the Almighty descends to the lowest third of the night. May Allah bless us to be of those who are up worshiping Him during that last third of the night, not watching the latest movies, not doing this, not doing that. May Allah forgive us and guide us all. I mean. Uh, so we believe, as the Prophet ﷺ said, "Yanzilu Rabbuna tabarak wa taala kulu al akhir," that our Lord descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night. Ahl Sunnah Taslim fi Nasus. This is how the Salaf were. The Salaf of this Ummah they accepted that. The Sahaba radiallahu taala anhu majma'in they knew that there was other places in the world. They didn't say, "Oh, in China, Ya Rasulullah." Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's, it's, it's darkness, or in such and such far land, it, the time is different. They didn't get into those things. Instead, oh, the Prophet Wasallam said this, we accept that. Khalas, uh, our Lord descends. The how, we don't know. But the fact that he descends, we accept. And this goes to the athar, goes back to the athar of Imam Malik, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, when he said, uh, when he was asked about uh, Istoa, 
you know, when he, he was mentioning in a dars, he was teaching in the haram, and a, a student said, Ya, you know, Ya Abu Abdullah, uh, cave istoa. You know, how does Allah uh, uh, rise? How does he rise above his throne? Imam Malik, you know, put his head down and became, you know, he had a very, he became very angry. And he began to sweat. Look at our salaf of this ummah, how they had the ghira and the love of the deen. And just was like, you know, it's like almost you've blown a fuse. What are you talking about? And then how did he answer? Rahimullah ta'ala. He said, al he said, al istawa ma'loom. وَكَيْفِيَ مَجْهُولٌ وَسُوَالْ عَنْهُ بِدَعَ وَأَنْتَ مُبْتَدِعَ وَكَمَا قَالَ إِمَامْ مَالِكْ رَحِمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He said, the, the fact that Allah, the fact that Allah ascends is known. We know this because Allah said it in however many places in the Qur'an uh, that He's mentioned, الرَّحْمَنَ الْعَرْسِ اسْتَوَى all of these ayats show us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascended above his throne. He ascended above his, his throne. So, the fact that he ascended above his throne is known. The how is unknown. And asking about it is an innovation. And you are an innovator. This is what Imam Malik, one of the salaf of this ummah, one of the mountains of ilm, you know, one of the, the a'imma, a'imma to deen and fiqh, uh, that he mentioned this powerful narration which we carry with us as a tool and as a weapon in dealing with the shubahat of Ahl al-Bid'ah, wa Zayr, wa Dhalal, especially Ahl kalam the people of Kalam who, who use you know, philosophy is a part of their, a, a part of their minhaj and understanding the nasus. Instead of going back to the salaf, going back to the Quran to explain the Quran and the sunnah to explain the Quran and the salaf of this ummah to explain this Quran, they go to their own intellect. This doesn't make sense to me. I've got to change the meaning to make it more befitting that we can understand it in our context. However, they rationalize it. Wa it is dalal and his misguidance and every misguidance and its people uh, will have their place in the fire. Wa'iyadhan billah min dhalika. So, Shaykh Salim bin Fawzan, half of the law ta'ala, was mentioning that bid'ah, you have bid'ah kufriya, and, and he mentioned some of the types. Uh, he said, likewise, negating the divine names and attributes of Allah, that di that's disbelief. And I seek refuge in Allah from that. This is because they describe Allah as having no divine names or attributes. Then he would be non-existent. Because that which uh, exists must have characteristics. And that which possesses no characteristics does not exist. This is very imperative. We're just going to quickly stop on this point just to highlight it to make sure that we understand what the Sheikh is saying. I'm going to give an example with regards to... Uh, that which is in front of us, this, this statement. And this is the logic that uh, the, the way in which Ahlul Sunnah is debating Ahlul Bid'ah with regards to this. Basically saying that if you say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, who has divine names and attributes that he says in the Quran, all throughout the Quran, Luhu Asma'ul Husna. You know, he says about himself, Subhanahu, that he has divine names, uh, the most beautiful names. You know, and all those attributes and names that are uh, mentioned in the Quran and in the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Allah describes Himself as Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, the most beneficent, the most merciful, Ar Razak, the, the 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 one who who provides. You know, that's His name, Ar Razak, and. He has the attribute of rizq, of being, of provide, of giving us, uh, of being the provider. And so, the sheikh is saying here that that which does not have characteristics does not exist. For example, if we look at this book, we say this book, it's small. That's a that's a uh, an adjective. We use an adjective 
to describe the book. The book is small. The book is orange. Uh, the book is little. Okay, those are some attributes. If we had a book, if we were to be able to call something a book, and it has no attributes, how could it possibly exist? If we can't describe what is before us, we have this bottle. This is a bottle of oil, of atar. This bottle, it has smell. It smells nice. It is small. Uh, it has a black top. It is see-through. Okay, it's clear. You know, those are some of its attributes. It is diamond shape. Those are attributes. Those are adjectives that we use to describe this bottle. If we don't have a way to describe that bottle, then there's no way we could say the bottle exists. So here's how Ahl Sunnah dealt with the shubahat of those people, the Jahmiya, primarily, who negated the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan, he said, they are the ones, uh, he says, um, this is because they describe Allah as having no divine names or attributes. Then he would be non-existent. Because that which, it, that which exists must have characteristics. And that which possesses no characteristics does not exist. For this reason, the Imams have ruled that the Jahmiya are disbelievers. They made takfir. This is a consensus of the ulama of the Salaf that they made takfir of the Jahmiya because they say that the Quran is created. They are the ones who state that the Quran, which is the speech of Allah, His revelation, that descended, was created like the rest of creation. But at, in fact, Ahl Sunnah says the Quran is the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is one of his characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has kalam. And there's many ayats in the Quran which uh, illustrate this for, for us. Uh, wa kallam Allahu Musa taklima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Moses or Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. So they are the ones who state the Quran which is the speech of Allah, his revelation. Uh, which descended, was created like the rest of creation. They say Allah does not speak and make a resemblance between him and an object, as something inanimate. You know, because that which doesn't speak doesn't possess, uh, you know, much power. It doesn't possess anything. So if we say this yellow pen, this highlighter, or this pencil, we know these things don't speak. They don't have the, the qudr, they don't have the ability to speak. So how is it that the people fell into, and even into this day and age, people who worship uh, inanimate objects, they worship uh, the, well, they worship even animals, you know, the elephant, in some cultures, they worship uh, statues, as the Quraysh did, and as many cultures have, have uh, practiced idol worship, they worship things which give them no benefit, and no, uh, no harm. They cannot harm them or benefit, or in fact, they, they cause them harm because they're committing shirk. So they cause them harm indirectly, uh, which will directly harm them in the hereafter. Uh, those things cannot benefit them or harm them or remove the harm, nor can those things speak. And that's the shahid here. That's the main point of mentioning this. So they worship those things which do not give them speech. So they are the ones who state the Qur'an, which is the speech of Allah, His revelation that descended, was created like the rest of creation. They say Allah does not speak and make a resemblance between Him and an object. That which does not speak cannot be a God. So this is what Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan said. He said Allah states, and this is also the logic that Allah says in the Qur'an, speaks about in the Qur'an, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is His divine speech. Allah states, And the people of Moses made in His absence out of their ornaments, the image of a calf for worship. It had a sound as if mooing. Did they not, uh, did they not think that it could, did they not realize that it could neither speak to them nor guide them to the way? So Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan says about this ayat, and this is in Surah Al-A'raf, ayat 148. He said, this shows that that which does not possess speech cannot be a god. That it would be something like an, an inanimate object. But instead, we believe 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of the worlds. He has divine names and attributes. We affirm those divine names and attributes as he subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed them in the Quran and as the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam affirmed them in the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from those attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses is speech. That he subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has speech. And he tabarak wa ta'ala spoke in the uh, divine revelations with the Quran being the last of his speech. But we believe that the original Injil or the Bible, so to speak, the original one uh, was from the speech of Allah. That it was his divine speech that Allah spoke uh, in that text. That text is comprised of his speech. It was a revelation, divine revelation. We believe that that which was revealed to Moses, alayhi salatu wasalam, and Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, and Ibrahim, and Dawood, all of these, t these uh, divine texts were the speech of Allah. They were the divine speech of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we just have the Quran that remains with us, and the Quran is protected as Allah did not give those other, uh, the other uh, speech of His, the same protection. He gave it and it, those messages were sent to a particular people, the people, the children of Israel and others, and that they, um, they changed the message. They changed the text and this was, uh, you know, given to those specific people whereas the Quran was given to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was revealed to him, but it was for all mankind. And those are just some of the important aspects uh, or, or, or things that Sheikh Salah bin Fawzan ta'ala mentioned with regards to the Ibara of Imam Babahari when he said, وَكُلُوا بِذَةٍ ضَلَالَةٌ وَدَلَالَةٌ وَأَهْلُهَا فِي النار. That every innovation is going astray and every going astray leads to the hellfire. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from being of the people who enter the fire wa iyadan billah min dhalika wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam